Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, rate, do the whole spiel of shilling while I do mine, whatever. Let's talk about the Palatine Blades. Now, this is something that I initially thought would be a nightmare to paint, but quite frankly, I liked it. I had fun doing it. It was pretty nice overall, and it was a good experience. Now, what you see in front of you isn't really proper Palatine Blades. They're not from Forge World. These are just things I made with some extra Space Marines and some weapons but now that that's out of the way let's tackle the history of this unit you see normally most legions have special units units that are particularly good at doing one thing and excelling at it well the same is true for the emperor's children because they achieved or they tried to achieve perfection and so one of those disciplines of perfection was dueling. And here is where the Palatine Blades come into the discussion. While normally specialist squads are formed and created and managed in a certain way that is more strict and more close to how the Emperor made the main legions, the Palatine Blades, or as they are known, the Brotherhood of the Palatine Blades, does not do that. You see, the Palatine Blades are renowned through the whole Imperium as master duelists. But you see, their formation doesn't work in the same way a tactical squad would, like Devastators, or Dawnbreakers, or Crimson Paladins. They work in an interesting way, because dueling is a one-to-one -one skill. It's a martial art where two men fight each other until one of them loses. So thanks to the nature of this skill, most Palatine Blades don't need to be in a squad with others to fight. They can pretty much handle themselves on the battlefield, especially if it comes to a one-on-one -on -one situation. But, but, since this is a brotherhood that kind of goes above normal Legion organizations, the Palatine Blades are sometimes, like, always allowed to fight in their own specialist squads. You have to understand, these specialist squads aren't really built, as I've mentioned earlier, like a tactical squad. They just so happen to find themselves on the battlefield and fight together. Of course, this needs to come with the approval of their Lord Commander, but that seems to be granted pretty easily to them. This unit is also one of Fulgrim's favorites, because why wouldn't he like the unit made specifically for perfecting dueling? Oh, that's a good question as any if you ask me. These duelists are renowned for how well they fight with swords and sometimes with trophy weapons, weapons they take from their fallen enemies. They are also pretty nice units to have, especially in on your side of the army, when you consider the fact that these men just hone their skills in fighting between each battle and each war. They are always in a constant state of perfecting themselves, which makes sense seeing, you know, how they're from the third legion. So you can pretty much imagine that they will not give up on training. Now, you have to understand another thing. How many of these units the Legion has is pretty much dependent on the Emperor's children present in any given war zone and the quality of their foes. Because there are times, and there will be times, where you won't have Palatine Blades to fight against a certain Xenos enemy. And because of that, they are not deployed. But whenever possible, and if there is a mighty champion among the enemies, well, a Palatine Blade is sent to deal with it. An example for a very renowned and known Palatine Blade is Lucius the Eternal. I will leave his story for another time. Let's look more into the weapons that the Palatine Blades use. Because you have to understand, this isn't your Ultramarine Gladius, no. This isn't your Imperial Fist Sword. <laughs> because these nice gentlemen 
wield something known as carnival sabers. These sabers are made by using an ancient old Terran ritual combined with certain alchemical formulas that in the end create a sword that is uniquely made for each master swordsman. So in fact, they don't have the same swords. Each member of the Palatine Blade has his own unique sword specially created for himself. Sometimes, our Palatine buddies here are known to use even the weapons of their down foes, alien weapons, even coming from races that should only be destroyed. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what the enemy is, as long as the weapon is finely crafted. And they will spend a lot of time training with that weapon until they become even better than the downfall they took it from. Which speaks a lot about Fulgrim and what he does later on. But nevertheless, let's go back to our beautiful Palatine Brotherhood. Usually, a Palatine warrior by himself is enough. But when managed to be deployed in squads, they usually come in squads of five, with four Palatine warriors, each one an exemplar of his own legion, and above them, a Palatine Prefector. This guy usually acts as a surgeon in normal squads, but is also the leader of the unit. The one that gets the role of Prefector gets it because he is not only the most skilled and veteran Palatine out there, he also gets it because he has the most combat experience with leading a squad. As you can imagine, specialist duelists, they tend to be more individualistic. And so you need a squad leader to rein in their arrogance and bravado. But of course, this isn't really that well documented, and at this point, all this knowledge about the Prefector and how he gets picked has pretty much fallen into rumors and speculations, and we don't really have a clear idea or of what's happening with that, to be honest. But what we do know for sure is that most of the time, you'll see the Palatine Blades fight in Mark IV armor. Of course, this is something new, when Mark III was first introduced, they were that in the beginning, still it can change and many members do prefer Artificer armor to have something specially created for them. But don't think the Palatine Blaze to just be melee fanatics like the World Eaters, because they do come equipped with frag, crack grenades and also a bolt pistol. Sometimes. They, have, they fight with power swords or power lances, sonic shriekers, and, yes, jump packs. And of course, the Prefector sometimes get access to the most beneficial bomb out there, the melta bomb <laughs> They are quite a versatile unit that is not only stuck to its melee focus, but it can also deal pretty much important damage depending where you need them. Of course, there's one more aspect that's interesting about the Palatine Blades, and that is their desire to master the Maru Skara. This is an ancient, old, pan-European way of fighting. It is, in fact, just one move, known as the Killing Cut, which combines a feint with a decisive strike that ends the enemy. Needless to say, that all Emperor's children, but of course, more intensely, the Palatine Blades, are trying their best to gain perfection with this skill and hone it as their own, make it their own on the killing field. Fun fact, remember I told you they have Charnable swords? Sabers, excuse me. Yeah, well, apparently Fulgrim was at one time rumored to have like 360 of them made specifically so he can reward people with them. He did reward six of them to the Cyber Seer Insurrection survivors. Again, he does have a lot of them. But still, they are an elite unit of the Emperor's children. And while they do not act as the bodyguards, for example, like the Devourers, 
that is the job of the Phoenix Guard. They are pretty interesting units to field on the battlefield, especially thanks to their skills and their close brotherhood in fights. They make us some good champion killers, trust me. Okay, I've talked enough about lore, let's go into the figurines and painting them. Two of them are made with the sergeant kit for the Horus Heresy. One of them has a, what was it again, a sanguinary guard, sword, and the mechanical hand you get in the Devastator kit. Another one has one of those weird Age of Sigmar sea elf swords. I, I really like how that one came out. Well, you were busy doing something else, you were studying the blade and so on. And then there's the guy with two swords. One of them is a Gladius from a normal tactical marine squad. The other one I have no idea where I got it from. <laughs> to be honest, it escapes my mind right now, so whatever. I primed this whole thing black and then used Phoenician purple on it. Of course, there's a bit of gold for the more interesting aspects. White from Vallejo for the white parts. I did cover the, what do you call them? Highlighted, should you say, a little the golden pieces with Dorn Yellow to give them a more interesting look. And it is pretty interesting to me. I, of course, made the uh, front part of their faces to be golden. So it looks a little bit like the original. Overall, it's... Not that complicated to build your own guys, especially seeing how you can just put swords on them and you're kind of done. But of course, that's not really enough. You can always build up stuff how you want and do everything that you might consider it's proper and desirable. Hell, you might even add more trophy weapons to them. Now, I'm not really that sure what you can add to these guys. But I'm sure there's a bunch of bitsies out there in this world with swords and lances that would be fitting for this. One of my initial ideas was to use one of those custodies swords, but I changed my mind pretty quickly on that one, to be honest. Nevertheless, it's super, it's an easy build. Painting it will be... Medium to difficult, I would say. The paint goes in better than your normal, than white does. White will always suck, but the purple and the gold and stuff, they can go in pretty well, and it looks pretty nice. Now, I've tried to make a wash out of Phoenician purple and Emperor's Children pink, and a bunch of water, which I think kind of muddy them in a way but still kind of like the way they came out overall and i'm pretty happy to have them as part of my emperor's children army or building up to it next it's gonna be the phoenix guard <laughs> that one's gonna suck when i do it but i'll, I'll give it time nevertheless this has been all for today i hope you enjoyed this and i'll see you in the next one